Hi everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and today I'll be looking at Gigabyte's brand new Z490 Aorus Master Motherboard for Intel's new 10th gen CPUs. First though, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications as I'll be churning out lots more hardware focused videos over the next few weeks, looking at more motherboards, build guides and group tests. So if you do that, you'll be notified when I upload and your support means a lot. So the Z490 Aorus Master sits below the Aorus Extreme and above the Aorus Pro AX in Motherboard's new Z490 product stack. Although for now, I can't talk too much about prices. The Aorus Master is a seriously premium build of kit. It weighs an absolute ton and has a massive cooling on the top side and underside of the PCB too. The 90 amp VRMs consist of 14 direct phases and Gigabyte includes two massive fin heat sinks that are linked by a heat pipe to cool them. Interestingly, there's no small fan in the heat sinks here, unlike MSI's similar MEG Z490 ACE, but as I don't have a 10th gen CPU yet, I haven't been able to test the boards to see if the VRMs really do need to be actively cooled. At the very least, the Z490 Aorus Master looks absolutely awesome, I'm sure you can agree, and certainly like it can handle an overclocked 10 core Comet Lake S CPU. The board has three M.2 ports, all of which are covered in heat sinks, and here uh, Gigabyte cools both the top side and underside of the SSDs, something the MSI MEG Z490 Ace doesn't do. The actual M.2 heat sinks are huge as well, with the lower two being catered for by one huge single piece heat sink. Now, Gigabyte is one of several manufacturers that is listing PCI Express 4 compatibility, and here it's claiming that the M.2 ports are as well, obviously. However, the situation is that Comic Lake S will not support PCI Express 4.0, and that's uh, probably a future feature for uh, another CPU range, most likely 11th gen or whatever Intel comes up with next, basically. Something I love about Gigabyte boards is that the more premium models include thermal sensors that could be tied into fan control and used to control your fans or pumps, uh, which makes them great for water-cooled systems, where it's more efficient to control your fans using the coolant temperature and not the CPU temperature. And Gigabyte's EFI fan control section is excellent too, so I also look forward to being able to fire up the board and uh, to check out the EFI from Gigabyte. Uh, you'll also get eight fan headers on board too, which is well above average. The board also includes a power button, a reset button, dual BIOS switches, and round the back, there's a Q uh, Flash Plus button to allow you to update the EFI without a CPU in the socket, as well as a CMOS clear button. Overall then, it's, uh, it's only half the story really what we're seeing here, but this is a stunningly well-featured motherboard that betters some of the competition in a number of areas, and I can't wait to strap a Core i9-10900K to it to see how it performs. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you get notified as soon as that review goes live, and thanks for watching.